Hi everyone. The weekend is just about here and I needed to make another video to continue to try to draw attention to my channel, more importantly to get my watch hours up. While at the same time, while I'm waiting on a shipment of magnets to come in, uh, which is going to change everything. I've got other parts coming in. I mean this whole, everything's going to change dramatically. So what I want to do here, I, as I was tinkering around, I came across some interesting configurations that I've never tried with magnets before. So I thought, well, you know, I'll just make a video of it. So what we have here is five magnets here. They're basically, if you remember these things, they're just one inch by one inch square, quarter inch, with another magnet exactly the same thickness, but they're round, so I have a round on top of a square. M42, five of them, and then four um, cylindrical magnets, M42s as well, one inch by one inch. Okay, so right now, I just want you to see the interaction of the way this is configured with these here. And that's all. This is this early part here. This first preliminary part is. So we'll just watch this. Okay. Notice it accelerates to the stators. This will not keep going, I promise you. If it does, I'll be shocked. Okay. So there's not another set of stators over here. There's nothing to keep it, to keep it continuing. But now watch this. Let me pull this one out <clears throat> and this one the point of pulling those two out is because as this one comes through just as this one's getting ready to end this one's picking up here so these are not perfectly spaced but it is relatively close so watch this Now, isn't that interesting? If I only had... Oh, look at this. Okay. It's, it's not going to go any further than that. That's going to be it. Okay. So, the interesting part here is that if we had another station, if you will, I like call this a station of stators, a station of four, in this case, only two right now, and then another station, another station, another station. I want four stations. Because if we do three, that means all of these will be in absolute perfect sync. And we don't want this to be in perfect sync. We want it to be offset. Just the same way pistons work in a car with the crankshaft. Uh, Everything is offset. So I want to do the same thing. Now what I'm going to do here, I'll cut the video. And then I'm going to take these two. I'm going to move them over about the same space. And let's just see what happens. Okay. Okay, here it is now with just three, and then I'll add one more. This is actually traveling further now. It's got a longer acceleration period. But it's still going to slow down and stop. All right, let's see what will happen now. Now I have four stators. Everything is in attraction mode. Um, unfortunately, and I'm not going to readjust all of this, it's quite a bit of undertaking because of the way I have this jury rigged. But the space in here is a little too much. Um, I had another stator in the middle, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But now it's a big deal. So what, it, what we have now, we have a longer acceleration. But because this gap here, it seems to just kind of get a little bit sluggish right through here. And then as it gets through here, it wants to pick back up again. Unfortunately, we don't have another stator all the way around. Now I have a boatload of stators coming in the door here tomorrow, maybe even today, but otherwise they'll arrive on Monday or Tuesday. And then I also have more brackets coming. I'm gonna stick with the steel for now um, and also for reasons of expense. But I have a hunch and other people are saying as well, this metal here, Maybe, and I agree, it probably is reshaping this field somewhat, the, the, the flux field. It's just like this, but this metal may be spreading it back further and flattening this out a little bit. So instead of being like that, maybe it's more like that. Let me put my hands up. So instead of being like that, maybe it's a little bit more like that. So I don't know. I, I don't have any uh, magnetic film to put over this. I'll get some, and then we'll see better what's going on.
Okay, I'm just doing this off the cuff, if you will. Now, I also have more brackets that are coming in, too. I'm going to stick with the steel because I'm thinking these, these steel may be reshaping the field. And instead of being like this, it might be flattening it out some, and that might be helping this go through. So for right now, I'm gonna start off with steel uh, armature brackets and uh, or stator brackets. And then um, if, if things don't pan out very well, it may not, this may be a dead end. Then I'll remove metal brackets and replace them with um, acrylic uh, braces or wood. I'm also going to have a, a disc set up, a disc table, and then I can slide these magnets back and forth on a track, each one. So we can adjust them in and out and the angles as well. And everything will be marked in degrees and inches from the wheel. So we can set everything to three inches, three and a quarter inches, Sorry, guys, I'm in America. I don't do things in centimeter. And, um, and this way we can make some quick adjustments as need be. Is this going to perform as well? It's interesting. It kind of has a good kick out, doesn't it? I'm watching the end over here. This is the important sides over here because this is where the stator ends. There's no more. It kicks out nicely despite how slow it's going. So, yeah, if I had another stator right here, it would go into this one and just be another kick out. There we go. We'll do it. We'll do it. Oh my word. Look at that. Wow. Good lordy. Look at this. This is interesting. Oh. There we go. We'll do it. We'll do it. Oh my word. Look at that. Wow. Good lordy, look at this. This is interesting. Ha, ha, ha. It's going to stop now. I see it. It's going to stop for sure. Okay. Now, you have to admit, that was very interesting, especially if you're a magnet head like me. Okay. Um, I know one of you are all going to say, if I remove this, this magnet, I think this is the one that's giving us trouble. Um, I say, no, let's move this one. Let's try this. Uh, Now, since it seems to work better in this direction, let's do this direction again and see what happens. Getting good acceleration over here. I mean, this is sweet. I'm not sure what's going on, but we have a better acceleration over here than we do over here. I know these are not set very scientifically. And also remember, we're missing this stator here. That's why. Okay, never mind. <sighs> this is interesting. I refer to this as the sputtering engine. I know some of you are going to say, it makes no difference. It still isn't turning. That's all that matters. Now, what matters is what we just saw a moment ago. The wheel literally almost coming to a virtual stop and then picking speed back up yet again. And then going yet through another set of stators, I mean armature magnets. And then finally then it just fizzled out. So there is something going on here that some of you all need who are hard-headed need to admit there's something very interesting going on here that needs to be investigated. And that's what this is all about. I don't know anybody on the web that's doing this with these magnets and this configuration, what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is just trying to have some fun um, and enlighten people to what might be possible. Uh, in 1966, a gentleman uh, created a 
German magnet motor that was for a car. Um, if you just Google German motor magnet, the video will come up right away. It's impressive what he built. It's 100% all magnets. So if he can get a car engine to work off of magnets, and you can tell the, the footage is authentic, that's not fake. It's 1966. And back then, they didn't have the technology back then like we do today to start faking stuff using trickery and photography. And it was an official, some kind of report from a news agency in any regards. Um, and there's another gentleman also on, on YouTube, uh, a really big magnet engine. I mean, it's huge. It was like six feet, seven feet tall, and it's running. It's noisy as hell, but it works. All right, um, I guess that's it. Let me not take up any more of your time. Thank you, guys. Let me let you all go. I appreciate it. I just try and get my watch hours up. The ads that you see on my channel, I did not authorize. Um, YouTube is now putting advertisements on everybody's videos, including millions of channels that are actually closed. There are a lot of channels that people have just walked away from. I've noticed a lot of people who used to follow me. I went back in history and just started checking up a lot of my followers. They're all gone. They walked away. They haven't done anything with their channel in five, six, seven, in some cases, nine years. And YouTube has taken all of those dead channels and putting their ads on it. Now, I'll tell you this. If I took some of your photography or I took some of your um, videos and I put them up on my web site and started making money off of your stuff without your authorization, I think you would probably drag me into court and you would definitely win. There's some standard international copyright laws that are universal that are recognized throughout countries. YouTube had apparently has rewritten their rules, which goes against international copyright laws. So anyway, as soon as I get my watch hours up, I'll start making money off of, of these ads that are coming up. And then I start pouring that money into this. Um, I don't expect to make a lot of money at first. I'll be lucky if I make uh, maybe $50 to $100 any given month until my watch hours really go up dramatically. And they have. It's amazing. Uh, um, YouTube says my watch hours or attention to the channel has gone up 64,000%. So well, anyway, we'll see where that goes.